can you all hear me? Yes, in the back, everybody? Okay. So, it is 1998, and I am sitting um, with my mom, my brother, my grandmother, and um, my entire family almost in my brother's bedroom. And it's this tiny little bedroom, and um, it's the safest place in the house. And as we're sitting there, I'm looking out the window, and I see this giant piece of metal fly by. And I am not sure what it is, but I think it's a ceiling or a roof or something. And I wonder, is everybody going to be okay? I live in the Dominican Republic, so hurricanes are something, you know, usually fun. Uh, it just means that it rains a little bit and that um, there's no school. But this one, it's very, very different. And as I'm sitting there, like, keeping my distance, I see that there's a lot of rain and there's a lot of wind. And um, I see outside and there is this, um, the trees that usually, like, there's bamboo trees that are usually standing still but they're moving and bending like they're made out of rubber. And there's all usually a river that you can see, but you can, I can't see anything. There's like everything is a mess. And there's this noise that starts and it's like really, really loud. And it starts like, it's almost like a hollowing, like a scream. And it starts like, woo. And, and I'm a little bit like excited, but I'm also mostly very, very, very scared because I've never experienced anything like this. And the loud gets like, like this noise gets like louder and louder and louder. And then suddenly it stops. And it's dead silence. It's like you never know how much noise nature makes until it's completely absent. And I look out the window again and I see now the river. And it looks more like an ocean because there's been so much rain. And we, um, because it's so calm, we come outside of the room and we check and there's still no power. And we go and get some matches and we get um, more food and we check to make sure that the windows are not broken. And, and everything is fine. And, but we know we need to go back into the room because... We have like about an hour to go back because the eye of the storm is going to pass. And at that moment, that's when really things like really get really bad because the tail of the hurricane is going to come. So we go back into the room and it gets um, very, very loud again and very messy and it rains some more. But then luckily for us, we were saved and it passes. And the next time, I felt this way. It was 2014, and I was in New York City, actually in my apartment in New Jersey. And I'm sitting on the floor, and I'm asking to the empty room, please tell me what to do. Please, please tell me what to do. And... You know, I've been in the U.S. at that point for um, about, I think, maybe nine years. And I came uh, with a scholarship to go to Parsons School of Design in New York. And I had, after Parsons, I got this great job working at an agency doing motion graphics, which is what I do. And I, you know, it was great. And also, I was miserable. And... That, that time, I just, you know, I decided uh, to start my own agency. And, and this was like a very hard transition because someone from the Dominican Republic that's this small coming to a country like this, that when I came here, I didn't speak any English. And trying to do that was a little crazy. But still, I felt like I had, you know, I had this desire to do it. So I did it. And it was great because it gave me so much freedom. And it also... There was something inside of me talking at me and telling me there's something else. There's something more. There's something more. 
But at that moment, I could not focus on my career because my life, my personal life was crumbling. The love of my life, my husband, for nine years, we were, um, we loved each other very much and we were so unhappy. And so at that moment, this hurricane, this storm was happening inside of myself, was happening in my head and in my heart. And, and I'm in this room and I'm, and I'm asking the universe or God or whoever is, you know, listening, please, please tell me what to do. Please tell me what to do. And I feel like, you know, I'm sitting there on the floor crying and I feel like almost like everything is moving like the same way a hurricane moves. Like it's like around, like, like the, the, the rain goes like crazy like that. And I'm feeling this. And, and I'm like thinking, please tell me what to do. And then I hear almost a voice that says, get quiet and just listen. And I'm like, okay. Um, I'm like, okay. So I've been meditating for, for a while. So I know that sometimes that means just like sit in silence. So I do that. And... And, you know, it, it keeps getting louder and louder and louder. And it's crazy and crazy and crazy. And then there's this silence and this peace in this moment that felt like that first time that I was in the eye of the hurricane. And at that moment, it's almost as if I heard a voice, which is really weird, I know. But it, it was like a feeling. It was not like a voice. I don't hear voices. But, <laughs> <laughs> but it was like a feeling that said, there's something big that you need to do in this world. And as long as you are this miserable, you can do it. And that moment, that visit from my muse changed everything. <sighs> so... I packed my things, I lovingly left the marriage, I decided to travel the world, I put everything in storage, and I started on this quest of trying to understand, well now if I have this blank canvas because I quit my job, I started this thing, and now I'm not married, I don't have to be in any city, what will my life look like, you know, what, what can my life be? And I was taking this opportunity of, like, breakdown to just, like, really a breakthrough. And, like, trying to find that um, messages and, like, what is that I need to do? Like, what is that thing? Please tell me. So in this deep inquiry, um, in this moment, I moved from New York City to Portland. And, and then I started, um, you know, planning a lot of things and a lot of travelings. And this is how I plan with sticky notes on paper, and and then I started She's the Universe. And She's the Universe is it's a global platform where um, we're empowering and inspiring teenage girls to stand in their own stories. And we're doing this through mentorship, community, and, um, and storytelling. And so I've been to 10 countries, 21 cities, and three continents so far. And the goal is to travel to 111, to do 111 interviews. And um, this is not, I'm not piloting this, like this is not, I'm not driving this <laughs> thing. Um, but, but funny, like the, the day that um, when I did my first fly to start this project, there was a woman pilot and immediately I was the last one on the plane and I was like, can I interview you for a thing that I'm starting to do? <laughs> so she did and the audio was awful. So I never actually share that post, but I have a great picture um, <laughs> here. So I've been to places like the Amazon in Peru and Iceland, and I've met incredible, incredible girls, and I, some of them are in Portland, and I, I was hoping that they will be here, but I, you know, one of them that I really wanted to be here is not, but they're incredible, so if you wanna see their stories, they're all online, 
Um, I've done so far 51 interviews, and I came to Portland to start to pause and start editing more. I've already released season one, and um, yeah, which are six stories. And then this year, I got a grant um, from an organization called WBS, and it was amazing. And and then the project has been in many, you know, people talking about it. And this is the first ever episode, which is someone that I adore, which is my niece, Anne-Marie. And she's a big inspiration for this project. Um, so season two is coming out on October 11. And that is next, how many weeks? Two weeks from now? I don't know. Um, I'm editing like crazy. I feel like, uh, yeah. But I want to tell you a little bit about how, you know, what was kind of like the first thing when I knew that I wanted to do this thing. I was in the Dominican Republic uh, with a friend, and she found this magazine by chance that talked about this organization called Mariposa, which means butterfly. And Mariposa is an organization for uh, girls to empower them through uh, sports. They, you know, these girls do surfing, and, and they bring people to... Um, inspire them like a lot of the people who come from the US as well and and so I went to visit I didn't know anybody there so I just show up and as soon as I entered the space and I saw girls running around free in a country where really um, I think the numbers I'm not really good with data but I think the numbers are like 30 uh, 36 percent of girls in the Dominican Republic uh, get married before the age of 18 and also they get uh, pregnant, I think, before the age of 14 years old. Uh, so numbers are crazy. It's one of the biggest, um, like, that mortality for teenage girls. Actually, that's one of the biggest things that kill teenage girls, which is pregnancy before the age of 18. So I learned so many things going to this place and just how, but the thing, that I think that, you know, numbers are a thing, and you see that, and you're like, oh, God, girls. But then you get there. And you meet people that have names like Jafresi or Aritza, and they tell you their stories and their lives, and you connect with them in a different way. And I'm like, I feel like everybody needs to know your story. Um, and I think you, I know so many incredible people, like they have big dreams. And I know a lot of amazing women around the world, and I see how, and not only women, like everybody, and they need so much support, especially girls. And so I had this dream of creating a mentorship program. And, and the idea was to connect all of these amazing girls that I was meeting around the world with all of these amazing you know, people that I know and you know, create something where like for four years, girls and women come together and they support each other. And also at the end of this year, then there is this um, event that happens where girls and women come and they we try to solve a problem that's happening in the world. We like brainstorm of how can we solve this. And those dreams were hell big. And I was like, you know, you're supposed to dream big. So what do I do with this? Like, where do I even start? I'm a tiny little woman from the Dominican Republic. I am an animator. I'm not a program mentorship. I don't even know what this is. And I don't, you know, what do I know about any of this? And I had to change my strategy because I was doing nothing. For years, I was like, I don't know what to do with this. Like, I was hoping for, like, a full manual with instructions of what I needed to do. And that was not coming. So I had to ask a different questions. And, and I'm so lucky that I have like amazing friends that guide me into what kind of questions I should ask to change this um, narrative in my head of like, oh, this is too big. And the question was, what's next? And, and asking this question instead of being, you know, and you know this, right? Like, it's not about the whole thing. It's about, like, what steps can I take right now to make something happen? And so I'm glad I listened to my friends, and I'm glad um, I listened to myself also. And because this project has been, I was born to do this. 
oh, of course, there were things that, you know, well, I have no time for this. I have no money for this. How am I supposed to do this? You know, I remember writing this. Uh, dear universe, thank you for sending me so many ideas. Now please send me the time and the energy to make them happen. <laughs> like, seriously, thank you. But like, how? But, you know, how? My name is Laura Peña. I am an animator, filmmaker, speaker, a world traveler, U.S. citizen, Dominican, and I am a woman. For a year, I am traveling around the world with a camera in hand and a head full of dreams in the search of 111 girls to ask them who they are, who they want to become, and how we can help them get there. My passion for travel, storytelling, and girls' empowerment is what drives me. That question of what would you do if you could do anything led me to this journey. I want to listen to these girls. I want to witness their dreams and I want to share it with all of you. I am going about this as if the future of this world depends on these girls, because it does. So that was the first step of, um, I just started filming girls that were friends of friends and I recorded this audio. Um, I was like, I'm just gonna test this microphone. And, and so I tricked myself with things like that. I was like, I'm just gonna do this little thing. Um, <laughs> and, then, and then things happen and then I'm traveling and all that stuff. So I wanna say that if maybe like me, there's something that you wanna do something that you've been wanting that's in your heart and or that you already been doing and you're like, wow, but like, but how do I, I don't know what to do next. These are the things that I feel like have helped me um, to keep moving forward. So I wanna share with you, is that okay? Okay. As what's next, you know, not what's the big picture. That's great too, but like to keep moving is what's next right now. And the most important one really is listen. And this is why the question about how do your muse speaks to you, um, I think was relevant for this talk because, and of course the muse is the one that I take the action, but I feel like a lot of it comes from somewhere that I have no idea what that is. And we can call it the muse, we can call it inspiration, we can call it our inner voice, but seriously, I feel like there's something else and, and maybe if you don't feel that way, that's okay as well. Maybe it comes from your brain, maybe you're super smart and that's also awesome. I've never thought of myself as being a super smart person, which I think I am now, but I, growing up, you know, this tiny little girl um, didn't feel that way. So I also feel like part of it's, it's me and part of it is something else. And, but listening is, is a lot, right? It can be so many things. It doesn't have to necessarily just be sitting and meditating, because that doesn't work for everybody. Sometimes I don't want to do that. Um, but it is just going for a walk, maybe, taking a different path. Once I did like a skipping club, which means you go skipping. Um, <laughs> and I pay for this. So, but it really like helped me get out of my own head and just do something different that will get me into a different space. And, um, you know, it does, you know, listening is not, sitting and watching the rerun of Game of Thrones, um, you know, binge watching so many other series that I'm not gonna mention because it's embarrassing. But, um, but you know, but, but it, it is just finding a way, how does your muse speak to you and try to put yourself more in those situations. Um, and also it's not as easy as being like, yeah, just listen, you know, just like, it's the voices out there, just sit down and listen. But it is, it's hard. And, and sometimes it's not only hard to listen, but also to believe what you hear and believe that what you're, that this is really the right thing because we're so used to 
doing the right thing because when you want to go to the right restaurant, you, the best restaurant, you Google it and Google tells you where that is. There's no Google for the things that you have to do in this world. So you have to become your own Google and like ask and you know, it's a totally different beast. Um, and then the third one is to take action. And, and this is, it can be, you know, make whatever it is, make it a task and put it on your calendar. So there is, yeah, I want to play something for you. Well, actually, I want to say something first. Um, yeah, it's not as easy as one, two, three. There's a lot of things that happen. Life gets on the way. We want to do something, and we just feel like it's stupid, or someone else thinks that it's stupid. But um, I think that one of the biggest things is, let's see. Listen, yeah. Yeah, listen, I wanted to say that listening is like being in the eye of a hurricane. And I want to give you a bonus step. That's what I wanted to get to. Um, that bonus step is to really, and I think that because you're here today, you're already doing it. So, woohoo. Um, it is surround yourself with the right kind of people. People that really want to do something. People that are curious about things. Um, I've been very lucky because I have so many incredible people that support me. And some of them are here today, so I might cry. I'm going to try not to cry. I promise I'm going to cry. Um, so I met um, Brie, and I don't know if she's here, but she is. I met her at uh, Creative Mornings, and we're collaborating. She's creating um, illustrations for some of the girls that are coming in season two. So that was incredible. And she was just sitting next to me, and we started talking. And amazing people that just, like, meet with me and... Uh, on Zoom while I'm traveling and just like support me and cheer me up or tell me what I need to know um, and get out of my own way. And and then I, now I feel like I have like a core team of international people and we just meet once a month and we talk about what we need to do. And these are, um, you know, people are just, a lot of these people are just doing things because they care about this project and they care about the future of girls and this is not, I don't have a bu big budget, this is not, you know, I got a grant that covers for the next season, but the traveling and all that, this is me and, and the amazing friends and people that I meet along the way. And of course, there's my mom. She's my biggest supporter. And I was just talking to her earlier. Um, she has no idea what's happening. I mean, she kind of get it, but um, but, you know, sometimes she's my biggest supporter, but sometimes our closest people won't understand what we're trying to do, and they will think we're a little crazy, and they will think, like, what do you mean you're going to stop working for a year to do this project? Who's paying you for this? Like, how do you, what? Like, no, I'm wasting all my fundings for this, my savings. They're like, oh, yeah, you're crazy. Um, <laughs> and so, so people will think you're crazy, and, and that's fine, too. And you just have to surround yourself with people that maybe are as crazy as you are. So I want to I wanna play this video for you. This is Kaya. And I met Kaya in Copenhagen um, la this year, the beginning of this year. And I asked her what her dream was. And this is what she had to say. My name is Kaya. I am vulnerable. I am the universe. My superpower is my vulnerability, yet being emotional and sensitive. And it isn't something that I would have in the past called a superpower, but I think I'm starting to realize that it can be and that it, it, there is strength in vulnerability. And it's not strength in spite of vulnerability, it's strength because of vulnerability. I'd really love to be a performer and to have that as a career, either with dance or theater or aerial or some sort of, um, yeah, performance. And that is something I've often been scared to admit that I want because, because I've been scared that if I say that I want that and then I don't reach it, 
you know, I was scared that I can't, that I can't do that. And therefore I've been scared to tell anyone or like say it aloud. I'm gonna tell you something then. <laughs> I've been scared of saying the things that I want out loud. <laughs> I'll tell you what I want. This is what I want. I want this, whatever it is. I want this to be on Netflix and I want Michelle Obama to be part of it. So, it's so scary. <laughs> <laughs> but I've been, you know, I feel like I can tell you because you're telling me mm -hmm. your dream too. Mm -hmm. um, but we have to give voice to those dreams, you know, mm -hmm. even if we, it doesn't really matter if we get it or we don't get it. I believe that you can get everything you want and probably you believe that I can get what I want too. Mm -hmm. I think not only believe in yourself, but surround yourself with people that believe in you as well. Mm -hmm. Because when you surround yourself with people that believe in you, sometimes when you forget what you want, when mm -hmm. you forget that it's possible, yeah, then they can remind you. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>
but the beautiful thing I think for this is that the magic has happened once I stop listening to everybody else and what everything is telling me that I need to do, that I should do, and I start listening to the news. And sometimes the next action is all you need. And I believe, like I really, really do believe that each one of us have something inside, all of us. And the world will miss out if we don't do something about it. Because someone out there needs to see what we need to create. And I really hope that you listen to your muse when it speaks to you. Thank you.